Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Joe Cranin. Sleep apnea is one of the most common sleep disorders you can suffer from. In fact, according to the American Medical Association, about 30 million people in the United States suffer from sleep apnea but only 6 million people have received an actual diagnosis. So let's chat about the symptoms of sleep apnea, the three different types of sleep apnea, and most importantly, why you should probably seek treatment for it sooner rather than later. There are three different types of sleep apnea. There's obstructive sleep apnea or OSA, central sleep apnea or CSA, and then complex or mixed sleep apnea, which is a combination of OSA and CSA. OSA is by far the most common type of sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is basically a mechanical problem which is caused by the breathing tube in the back of the throat being too narrow at baseline. And then during sleep, when muscle tone relaxes, that airway is repetitively collapsing on itself. Some of the classic nighttime symptoms of OSA are chronic snoring. That's probably the most common one. Being very restless in your sleep is typical and being hot or sweaty or needing the bedroom very cold. Typical daytime effects of OSA are waking up to start your day not feeling refreshed, excessive sleepiness or fatigue during the day, and then cognitive impairment in a number of domains, including attention, memory and reaction time. A lot of people use terms like brain fog to describe how they feel. Central sleep apnea is basically a problem where the brain is not giving enough input to the lungs to breathe. Pure CSA is relatively uncommon, but it's not uncommon to have a component of CSA that's a fellow traveler with OSA. There are more episodes of waking up gasping than you would have with OSA. Patients with CSA may have trouble with sleep maintenance, but they often have trouble with sleep onset as well. So they have trouble falling asleep and they may also have trouble staying asleep. That's not common with OSA, but with CSA, right as you're dozing off, you may experience a central breathing event and wake up and people often feel like they're stuck in drowsiness. The daytime effects of CSA are similar to OSA, excessive sleepiness, fatigue, cognitive impairment, brain fog. Mixed sleep apnea is also and probably more commonly known as complex sleep apnea, and it is a combination of obstructive and central sleep apnea. The symptoms of complex sleep apnea are kind of a mixture, a lot of snoring, but you may also see more awakenings during the night with a feeling of gasping or choking, and there may be more trouble falling asleep than you would expect with pure obstructive sleep apnea. The three types of sleep apnea are equally detrimental to your quality of life and can have long-term health consequences, but CSA is associated with a number of potentially dangerous health conditions such as cardiac problems, neurological problems that affect the brain or the spinal cord, and kidney disorders. When we're talking about risk factors for obstructive sleep apnea, the most common type of sleep apnea, they are aged, the older you are. Typically, we start to see an increased rate of obstructive sleep apnea weight, so being overweight or obese. Neck size, so men with neck sizes of 17 inches or more and women with neck sizes of 16 inches or more. And then anatomy, so your facial anatomy, your jaw structure that you inherited from your mom and dad. There's no way of diagnosing sleep apnea just by looking or listening. If you think you might be at risk for sleep apnea, you need a formal sleep study. The good news is that most of the time this can be done at home. The gold standard for obstructive sleep apnea and the first line treatment that's typically recommended for central sleep apnea or complex sleep apnea is positive airway pressure or PAP. What CPAP does is it takes air from your bedroom, compresses it, and delivers it to the back of your throat, splinting your airway open and preventing these episodes of airway collapse. Are there other options for treatment besides CPAP? Yes, there are a subset of what I would call non-invasive options like oral appliances for sleep apnea. And then there are invasive treatments like the Inspire device, various surgeries, as well as another category which you could call lifestyle changes. These are more long-term strategies like weight loss, reducing, eliminating alcohol, smoking cessation, things like that. Sleep apnea can really negatively affect your quality of life and can cause or worsen a number of medical problems. If you think you might be at risk for sleep apnea, talk to your doctor about it or go to sleepapnea.org to learn more. Thanks for watching.